Hello, I am Tiffany from Rattle the Stars Studio, and I wanted to take this time today to talk you through how I made my Ahsoka Clone Wars season three through five outfit. Ahsoka has a lot of costumes, but this was the one that really caught my eye and I thought would fit my petite frame the best. And it's not an amazingly complicated costume, but there are a lot of pieces and a lot of details that go into it. The biggest thing about Ahsoka's costumes is that you really have to watch your proportions. You want to take the proportions of the pieces from where they hit her body and fit that onto where it hits your body. Ahsoka is a tall character, she's an alien, she's animated, so there's a lot of room that the creators get to play with in terms of body shape, and that doesn't always reflect your body shape. I am very petite, I'm a little bit short-waisted, I'm a little bit curvy, so not exactly Ahsoka's body type from the show. So the biggest thing to really watch with this costume is your proportions. If it's proportional on you, it will look correct no matter your body type. So let's dive in here. The first thing I wanna talk about are her leggings. The leggings that I made are a cotton stretch knit. I buy all of my knits and spandex from spandexworld.com and that's where I got these. They are cotton spandex. I will link the, uh, I will link to the different fabrics in the description. I lost my words there. It's okay. Uh, so the other thing that I use is an illusion mesh. I decided I did not want to paint most of my body, so I took a little tip from the dance world and I used illusion mesh where she would have cutouts and where it would be showing her skin. The illusion mesh that I got is the color Rust and it matches on my skin tone the Mehron Foxy body paint that I use. You do have to kind of check this with your own skin tone and the makeup that you're using. If you're interested in the makeup, I do have a video all about that that's separate from this one. So the biggest thing about her leggings is that it has these six diamond cutouts. The pattern I decided to use for her leggings is McCall's 7482. It is an athletic pattern. The reason I was drawn to this pattern so much is it has a cutout piece along the leg. The reason that interested me so much is it meant that I could figure out these diamonds on a flat piece outside of it being curved for the leg. So it actually made it a lot easier for me to size and scale and manipulate these diamonds. So this is what that inset piece looks like. These are the diamonds. She has a large diamond and then five smaller diamonds. They go from her hip about where the leg bends down to the knee. So you will want to make sure you look at reference photos and scale it properly to your leg. So this is how it looks on the leggings I made. It's a gray spandex. My waistband is maroon because I ran out of fabric, uh, but you don't see that. I would recommend though making it gray if you can. So these are the diamonds. As you can see, this illusion mesh you can see my skin, you can see through it, but it looks like her skin and it looks like the right color. Um, so I have this here. What I did to sew that is I traced those diamonds onto the fabric and then I cut like an X at the points, the fabric inside of that tracing, and then I peeled it back to open up that diamond shape. I then took the illusion mesh and I cut a piece the same length as the main side piece. So it's this whole pattern piece. I cut this whole piece out of illusion mesh. That way I could match up the pattern pieces and sew around the edges of the diamonds without having to worry about the illusion mesh getting fiddly and falling out. Once the diamonds were sewn, I just trimmed all of this in here and trimmed it exactly toward to the stitching. That way I didn't have a bunch of bulk underneath the leggings as well because they should look very smooth and seamless. So that's the leggings. The diamonds are the hardest part. Again, watch your proportions. That's the biggest thing I can tell you with this costume. Next, 
next is her top, which is kind of a like tunicky shirt. It has a keyhole neckline and it has a wide open back and no sleeves. Again, I didn't want to paint that much of my body if I could help it. One, it adds time to getting ready. And two, I'm normally getting ready by myself and I can't really reach the back of me. So that would be really hard to do alone. Three, I am a more buxom woman. I feel more comfortable being in a full bra, not the sticky bras, not going braless. So I really wanted a solution that would help me wear my regular bra without it showing too much and so I could feel comfortable in the costume. Plus, I wouldn't have to paint my back. So, my solution is an undershirt. Mine is built on top of a compression shirt, like um, you can find them in like women's uh, bra sections. Uh, I got this. It really helps. It makes me feel all tight and controlled and it just makes me feel more confident in the costume. Uh, also, I have sleeves sewn on here as well as a full back piece that covers all of the area where the open back is. That way, again, I can wear my regular bra. I don't have to paint anything. And these are in the color that matches my skin tone when it is painted. That's really important. You might have to dye the pieces to make it match. You might be able to find pieces that already match your makeup. But if you are going with any kind of undershirt, illusion mesh, anything like that, really make sure it matches when you have the paint on and how the paint looks on your skin tone because that makes a difference. Uh, you can also do arm socks if you would prefer. I know a lot of Ahsokas who do arm socks, uh, but I went with this route. Now for her tunic top, like I said, it's the keyhole. So I put that mesh in the keyhole as well. The tunic should hit about midway through that large diamond. So it is kind of low on the hips. It will kind of cover the butt. Uh, so make sure you have it hit at the right spot. Now the back is a giant keyhole as well. It's a huge open back. And then I have mine close at the top with three skirt hooks. That gets the neck really tight to the body, which is what hers is animated as and because this is a spandex you don't really have to worry about it being too loose i used a jumpsuit pattern <laughs> to make this off of obviously not doing the pants part of the jumpsuit and making it sit more like a dress i used a J. Lee pattern it's an ice skating jumpsuit pattern that i already had in my stash it's pattern 3239 the reason I decided to alter a jumpsuit pattern is because it already had this circular back opening with the neck closure. So I did add a neck piece to it, like an, um, the collar, which is just a rectangle, so it's very simple. But I liked that it already had this circle back and it was already made for stretch material. So I didn't have to worry too much about scaling a woven pattern to fit stretch. You don't have to use a jumpsuit. There are lots of patterns out there that work, but I do recommend finding something that's already built for knit and stretch material. It just makes it easier. One of the other things I did to make sure it stayed close to the body is at the back and armhole seams, I inserted elastic. One, it helped give me a really nice finished edge, but it also stretches and keeps it tight to the body. So I don't have to worry about that back suddenly gaping really weird or anything moving on me that shouldn't be moving while I'm moving. So that's my tunic. It's also a cotton spandex. It's the same cotton spandex I used for the leggings, just in a burgundy color. Ahsoka has a lot of accessories. There's a lot of extra detail pieces in her costume. So first, let's talk about the belt. I did my belt, my bracers, my armbands, and my boots all out of real leather. You don't have to. A lot of other Ahsokas use foam or pleather or a mix of the two to make these pieces. I happened to find burgundy leather at a very deep discount 
pre-dyed, all of that. So that's what I went with and my budget allowed for that. I've also done a little bit of leather working before, so I had the tools for it. If you don't have the budget for leather, if you don't want to use leather, if you don't have the tools already and don't want to invest in the tools, pleather and foam is a great option. So I just wanted to preface with that because I did decide to use leather. Now, the belt has this back pouch and then it swoops around to the front and has this closure and tabard on it. So one thing I would suggest is make your pouch big enough to be useful to you. I did not make that choice and it's a little annoying when I'm in it and I can't actually use the pouch for anything. Uh, I have no real way to carry my phone in this costume. So pro tip from me to you, make your pouch big enough to hold your phone. <laughs> so there's that. Now, I wasn't positive how to close this because this is an animated show. They don't really show you how things close. Uh, it's one of the things about animation that is great for them and tough for costumers. So I opted for a belt buckle snap situation. So I wrap my belt around, then I snap the bottom and snap the top in place and then I just adjust it to sit exactly where it should. The back pouch should be right at the small of the back. These front pieces are just straight pieces because of how it's coming around the hips they will automatically look curved. You don't have to add any curving in there. The bottom ones however you do have to curve. <laughs> so I took some craft paper I sketched out the shape I thought this should be and I just wrapped it around my body and played with it until I got a shape I really liked. Uh, these probably curve a hair too much right at the front because they pop out a little, but it's not that big a deal. Like I said, this is real leather, but you can use pleather just fine. She does have two food capsules. Uh, you can find these on Amazon already done. Other people have made them out of pen caps. Um, I happen to get the pre-made ones. The saber clips I bought from Ultra Sabers. Uh, you can find some on Amazon, you can find them around, but honestly, the Ultra Sabers price was really good and they vend at most conventions. So depending on the convention you're going to, you won't have to pay shipping, you can just buy them there. Now the belt buckle is foam and warbler that is spray painted gold. This is what I had in my craft storage. So that's what I used. The tabard is pleather and canvas. Uh, I did this to give it kind of a leathery look, but also it has a lot of flexibility and it's just glued and warbled into the belt buckle as well. The uh, tabard I did paint with leather paint. I highly suggest a leather paint because it already has elasticity built into the paint, which means it's going to be able to flex and move and not crack. Eventually over time, you probably have to give it a fresh coat. There might be some flakage just because of wear over time, but you will not have to paint it nearly as often as if you used just a plain acrylic. You are able to mix latex into liquid latex into acrylics to help make it more flexible. But if you can already find a paint that's already flexible, it's a lot easier. For the tabard, I made my shape, figured out what the size and scale needed to be for me. It goes from the belt buckle to the knee and it does flare out some. So again, proportions. Then I just drew out the designs on my pattern piece and I traced it onto my pleather with chalk and then painted it. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, just takes a little time to make sure you get this all correct. I highly recommend folding your piece in half and uh, drawing on one side and then just mirroring it to the other side to help it stay symmetrical <laughs> because that's the hardest part. So that is all about the belt. So next, let's talk all about the arms and the neck. I should also add the neck. Uh, let's start there because Ahsoka has this little diamond necklace. Uh, it's a round necklace, 
has this small diamond. It's supposed to look like metal. I actually found this round necklace already online. I do not remember where. Uh, and it had a small little metal circle on the front. So it was already basically Ahsoka's necklace. I just had to turn that circle into a diamond. I did that with Warbla and then I painted it gold. And that's it. Uh, you know, very simple. Next, she has these four armbands along the upper arms that form diamonds between the bands. So I will say if you're going for Rebel Legion, make sure the points of these diamonds are very sharp and very on point. That is where leather does really well. Foam and pleather will do very well as well, but utilizing a stretch fabric for this won't give you the sharpest points. I tried <laughs> very hard, uh, but it just didn't quite work out. So I made each of my bands separate. I keep them kind of folded together. And each one is a different size as it goes down the arm. Mine close with Velcro. I am able to get these on myself, though sometimes it's nice to have a little help. What I will say about making them for separate bands completely is they can shift around on your arm. I find if I'm wearing Ahsoka for a longer amount of time, I do have to adjust them. They will slip down, they will twist on the arm. So it's not the most ideal to use Velcro. I would probably recommend making them um, where they touch and then having elastic in between the edges. That way it can just help keep it tighter. And I think you would get a much better fit and less fidgeting. I know other Ahsokas have made these complete pieces, so it's just one piece that they add to their arm and all four bands are there. I have not had luck doing that, but it is an option. Next is the gloves. So under her bracers, she does have these fingerless gloves. They are the same fabric as the dress and they're just simple little gloves. Um, trace your hand. The nice thing is you don't have to do individual fingers, so they're a lot simpler to make. They just have to wrap around the knuckle. Uh, I do not even have any elastic or anything in this. They're tight enough that they keep their shape just fine. Uh, so it's one thumb and around the knuckles. I didn't even finish this edge. Uh, spandex doesn't fray. And because these are gonna be covered by the bracers, I don't really have to worry about that. Uh, so it was nice not having to do another edge to anything. So just a real quick, simple pair of gloves. Next, on top of those, she has bracers. The bracers go from her wrist to her elbow. I did mine a little bit more along the edge of the arm. I just, I like that shape a little more. I think it makes it um, flow a little nicer, but doing it the other way is not a problem at all and is a little bit more accurate. But you do need the three buckles. It has this kind of diamond shape between them. And on top of the left arm is her comm badge. These and the buckles, I got 3D printed and then I just painted them. It's just glued onto the top here. The buckles are glued. I did also stitch them at the edges. I found that with the buckles, the glue was not always enough to hold them for a full event. So sewing was the way to go. Because mine come over the wrist and shape to the arm a little bit more, I did have to do them in two pieces. So there are there is stitching right here. Uh, so just understand if you're coming over the hand at all, you will need to do it in two pieces because the arm is curved. If you're doing it from the wrist to the elbow, you can make it all completely one piece as well. I attach mine with these sew-in magnet clasps. They're really nice, but depending on how tight the bracer is to your arm, they do have a tendency to pop and I have to fix them a little bit throughout an event or a calm day. So I might recommend full snaps instead as they would completely close in and you wouldn't have that same popping issue. But I like the magnets, they're very easy and very simple. The other arm is the same shape, it just doesn't have the comm badge. Now, the last piece of clothing items is her boots. 
For mine, I have a boot, an ankle boot that I found and painted burgundy to match the leather. And then I have the part that wraps around the full leg. If you are going for Rebel Legion, that part of the boot does need to be very stiff and not lose its shape. Because mine is leather, and sometimes the stiffness is a little uncomfortable, I have that an insert that I put into mine for Rebel Legion events versus if I'm just wearing it around a con or for my own uh, fun, I might not put that in because it can restrict movement a little bit. But it's just a really thin piece of Sintra that I have uh, shaped to the boot that it closes around. So these are my boots. Like you can see, this is very floppy. So uh, other people have used foam for this. I think that's really smart, especially because it will already be stiff for you. Uh, the buckles are the same 3D printed. They close the exact same way with these magnets and the boots are flat bottomed square toe to match Ahsoka's boots. I have them stitched on right here just to make sure they don't move around on me when I'm wearing them and they stay together as if they're one piece and I find it works really well. Um, I highly encourage finding any kind of memory foam shoe for this. These actually have that and it makes them the most comfortable thing to wear all day uh, and I just I highly recommend that. So that's just a pro tip. Uh, for Ahsoka Sabres, I have 3D printed hilts that I just carry and paint it up. Uh, you can find 3D printed hilts online. You can find the files. You can use Shapeways. There's other people that sell them already done as kits. Uh, you can also find some that are 3D printed that have LEDs. And then, of course, there are metal saber hilts and that you can get electronics, lights, like the blades, the whole nine yards uh, from multiple different sellers. I'm not going to go into sabers because that's a whole different thing, but I wanted to mention that I have the sabers. If you're going for Rebel Legion, you do need hilts. Uh, so just understand that 3D prints will do it for you. Now, the biggest piece of the Ahsoka costume and the part that most people want to know about right away. It's the biggest thing that we talk about as Ahsoka cosplayers, and that is the headpiece. Now, there are lots of ways you can make your headpiece. I will say with that, proportions are a huge factor in if your headpiece looks right on you or not, and can make sure you keep it as lightweight as possible. The more weight you have on your head, the more pressure you put on your neck and you will be very uncomfortable very fast. I tried to make my Ahsoka headpiece for start. It was way too heavy and I could barely wear it for more than an hour at a time. It was so uncomfortable. So learn from my mistakes. Make sure you keep it lightweight. I decided to buy my headpiece and this is a lovely latex headpiece from Wretched Hive Creations. He makes amazing pieces. He has this Clone Wars Ahsoka. It is perfect for seasons three through five because it is the longer look who. And he also has Rebels Ahsoka, which is absolutely gorgeous. Highly recommend. It's very affordable. You can get them painted or not painted. I opted to get mine painted and it looks fabulous. I will say after a couple of years, it does need a little bit of paint touch up, but that's expected for anything uh, you have here. So all I had to do for this headpiece was add the Padawan braid. Now mine, let me get it off the headpiece after here, off that. Uh, mine is these uh, diamond beads that I found at Joe Wands. They were like brightly colored in the kids section, uh, but you're going to be painting them anyway, so it doesn't matter what color they are. And then you have the circular beads and they alternate. I attached mine at the top with some super glue. It's been going strong. It hasn't let me down yet. I don't really think it will. <laughs> then it comes down and fully around the back Laku. This is screen accurate. It needs to go fully around it. And I will say it's really nice because I don't have to worry about it coming off at all because it's fully under this headpiece. Now, the Padawan braid that comes off, <laughs> mine was a uh, offering to the con gods because I lost it at my last event, but 
it would attach here. I opted to make mine magnetic so I could take it off for sad emotional photos, which does also mean that it is susceptible to being lost. <laughs> As you can see, this happened to me. If you don't want to take sad photos of leaving the Jedi Order, you can make it completely attached here, which I honestly think would be smarter <laughs> to do so you don't have to worry about losing it. Again, it's made from these same beads. I found triangle beads that I took at the end. Uh, you can make your own. Um, it's up to you what beads you use. Just look for stuff that's the right shape uh, and size. This piece, uh, because it is latex and this edge is a little uncomfortable. I did add some upholstery foam in the top just to add some padding, make it more comfortable for long wear. I also have some clips here so it clips in at my hair line like with the wig cap so I don't have to worry as much about it sliding off. This piece is super lightweight. It's very comfortable. It does have um, the issue that most headpieces have where you don't get a lot of mobility at the neck. You don't have a full range of motion. So you do kind of have to move your whole body to look at anything. It does cover your ears. So it can be a little muffling, a little pillow effect. So you might have to have people talk even louder for you to hear them. Uh, it's especially uh, an issue if someone is far off and is trying to get your attention. It can be very hard to hear them, but it's not that bad. Um, it's very easy to put on. It literally just goes over the head. It's going to look a little funny because I don't have my hair back, but, and my glasses are on, but it just goes over the head. It just sits here and it fits straight down the back. It's very comfortable. It's very light. I can wear this for an entire day event, an entire convention without any issues. I do tend to take it off once or twice just for heat and being comfortable when I want to sit and eat or something like that, but I highly recommend the latex headpiece. Obviously, if you are allergic to latex, you will want to look into silicone or making your own headpiece some other way, so keep that in mind. There are a ton of resources about making Ahsoka's headpiece that can be found on YouTube. One of my favorites is Jedi Manda's video about making her upholstery foam headpiece, which is a very common way others make theirs. Also, if you are looking for more resources about Ahsoka, building the clothing, building the headpiece, anything like that, and you are on Facebook, feel free to join us over at Team Tano. It is the Ahsoka Costuming Facebook group. I am one of the admins and founders. Please come join us. We would love to have you there. If at any point you have questions about making this costume or making Ahsoka in general, uh, while this is the only one I've personally made, I have been around and helped quite a few Ahsokas and seen what they have done. So I might be able to lend some ideas and assistance for her other costumes as well. If you have questions, comments, please let me know. I would be happy to chat with you about Ahsoka. She is one of my absolute favorite characters and it is a joy to wear her every time and I would love to have more people cosplaying her in the world. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. <laughs> Let me know if you have questions. I'm happy to help and I will catch you all next time. May the force be with you.